Next ones, let's think about dichlorobenzenes and let's go ahead and do some predictions first. OK, so you've got one, two dichlorobenzene, otherwise known as ortho dichlorobenzene. There it is. So that's one, two there. We can have one, three or meta dichlorobenzene. And then, of course, one, four or para dichlorobenzene. So three different isomers. OK, by the way, um, be kind of tough to figure out which isomer was which um, using our carbon 13 NMR. Let's see if we can do a better job using proton NMR. Well, one thing to do anytime you look in organic chemistry is get the molecule to where you can see things a little bit better. Now, drawing this like this is fine. It's one, two. But if I just flip it around by minus 30 degrees, I can get to this picture here. When you look at this picture here, you can see it's got nice symmetry and it's much easier to decide what equivalent hydrogens there are. And indeed, you've got two hydrogens there, each one of which is on a carbon that's next to the chlorine, carbon's next to the chlorine, carbon that's not next to the chlorine. So those two there, HAs, are equivalent. And you can see that really easily, I hope, by thinking of the symmetry here. And then, of course, these two here, HBs, are equivalent. So what I'm expecting for 1,2-dichlorobenzene is two peaks. Now, how will those two peaks be split? Well, HA is adjacent to one proton, so that will be a doublet. And HB is adjacent to one proton. Remember, this is identical to it. This isn't an adjacent proton. This is its twin. This is its match. This doesn't count. So HB is also adjacent just to one proton. So I should see two doublets, each of which is worth two hydrogens. Let's think about the 1,3-dichlorobenzene again. Let's flip it a little bit so that we can see the symmetry associated with it. So chlorine there, chlorine there. Now, how many different types of hydrogens are there in this one? Well, I would say that you've got this one here is all by itself in between the two chlorine atoms. Then you've got this one here and this one here are equivalent to each other. They're both on the carbon that goes to the chlorine or both next to the carbon that goes to the chlorine on the carbon that goes to the chlorine carbon. I think I've muddled that up, but you know what I mean, right? So those two are equivalent. And then this one down here is all on its own. So I would argue that there are three distinct types of proton there. The blue one there, the red one there all by themselves, and then the two equivalent in pink there, HB. Now, what will I see for these? First of all, HA. HA has got no adjacent protons whatsoever. So HA will be a singlet that's worth one hydrogen. HB has got one adjacent, so therefore HB will appear as a doublet and it will be a two hydrogen strong. And then HC has got two adjacent hydrogens, so HC should appear as a one hydrogen triplet. So we can immediately see that we expect the spectra of ortho dichlorobenzene to be very different from the spectrum of meta dichlorobenzene. Now, finally, one for dichlorobenzene, para dichlorobenzene. Have a look at that. And before I reveal the colored ones, predict how many different types of hydrogen there are. And I hope you said that there is one different type of hydrogen because each hydrogen goes to a carbon that bonds to the chlorine carbon and a non-chlorine carbon. This hydrogen here bonded to a carbon that goes to the chlorine carbon and a non-chlorine carbon. So one type of hydrogen, we would see one signal. There's no other adjacent hydrogen, so it would be a singlet that's worth four hydrogens. OK, so let's reveal the spectra. I should warn you that I had to play around quite a bit with these and didn't quite manage to get them all in the same format. But hopefully you'll get out of it what I want you to get out of it. So there they are. Three spectra um, and three compounds. So we'll start off with this one here. We got two distinct signals and they look, despite all the messing around, like two doublets. So what has two signals? that are doublets? And the answer is this one here, the one, two. Each uh, HA there is going to be split by one. HB is going to be split by one. Two different protons. Right there we are. Let's move that there. And I would venture to say that the HA is the one that's further downfield because it's the one closer to the deshielding chlorine. So HA there, 
HB there. Right, next one should be a doddle. Uh, we've got one signal. Which compound has got one signal with all four hydrogens giving that signal? And the answer is the 1,4 of the paradichlorobenzene. So let's move that down there and label every single one of that HA. And now finally, this one here, ignore the fact that the numbers are backwards. That's one, that's two, and that's one. So we got a one hydrogen singlet, a two hydrogen doublet, and a one hydrogen triplet. So obviously it's going to be the 1,3 or the metadichlorobenzene and HA is this one here, the one hydrogen singlet, because HA has got no adjacent hydrogens to it. The two hydrogen doublet is HB. There's two hydrogens that are HB, and they each have one adjacent, thus giving the doublet. And then find little HC down here, all by itself, one hydrogen split into a triplet by those. And we can see that, again, the proximity to the appropriate chlorines is reflected in the chemical shifts. HA, they're very close to two chlorines, so therefore going to have electron density sucked away from it like crazy. So it's going to be the most deshielded and downfield. HB, close to one chlorine each, so therefore not quite as far downfield, but still downfield. And then HC, a long way away from both of the chlorines. So there are the dichlorobenzene spectra as predicted by our consideration in the earlier slide.